In this video, we'll look at the 123D interface. This is the work plane, also called the sketch plane, or the canvas. You draw on it. This is the design menu, and many of these options have submenus. This is the undo and redo arrow. Here you'll find tools for operations you can perform on the model, such as move it, align parts, smart scale it, scale it, measure it, and smart rotate it. Here is the primitives bucket. There are 3D primitives and 2D primitives. Let's cruise a box into the work plane. It's called cruising when you first bring it into the work plane and after that it's simple moving. Cruising is different because you see that white handle? That snaps to the center of other primitives. If I cruise another box in, you can see it's snapping to the center. This cylinder is also snapping to the center, as is this cone. The 2D primitives also snap to centers when cruised to the canvas. Now notice that glyph at the bottom. I can change the size at this point. If I hit the tab key, it will take me to the other text field. Let's do that again. I'll cruise this circle sketch. It's snapping to the center. And I'm going to change its radius. When I select a solid, this glyph comes up with all these options. This is the Move tool, and I can move this in all directions and tilt it. Here is the sketch bucket. These shapes operate very differently than the primitive shapes. When I bring a sketch rectangle into the canvas, first I have to click on the sketch to draw it on. So I'll click once, then I click to specify the corners, and I click this check to exit. If I want to bring in another rectangle, and I want it to be on the same sketch plane as this one, I need to click on that sketch first, and then click the corners of the rectangle. This is significant because if these two sketches are not on the same work plane, there are things I won't be able to do with them. And this is what I mean by not putting them on the same work plane. If I click here first and then click the corners of the rectangle, this is not on the same work plane as these are. When I select a sketch, this gear comes up and then there are tools. For example, I can extrude it. The sketch bucket also contains different kinds of lines, arcs, trim and extend tools, and offset and project tools. This is the construct menu. This is the modify menu. This is the pattern menu. I can arrange solids and sketches in these patterns or mirror them. And this is the grouping tool. 
If I group multiple solids together, they'll move together. This is the combine tool that does permanent operations to multiple parts. For example, it will merge or subtract them from each other. This is the measure tool, the text tool, and the snapping tool by which I can snap one piece to another. And this is the materials tool. I can paint colors onto them. The clear glass is useful for seeing problems that might be inside. Here's a link to go premium, sign in, and here are links to help. This is the view cube. When I hover the mouse over it, this house and drop down arrow will appear. Click on the house to return to the default position. Click on the drop down arrow to select orthographic, which is nice for aligning parts. And orthographic combined with clicking on these different views on the view cube can help you with your modeling. Here's the navigation panel. Here's the pan tool, meaning I can slide the model around the screen. Here's orbit, which means I can move around it. However, I can do the same thing by holding the right button down on the mouse. And if I hold the scroll wheel down on the mouse, I can pan. Zoom lets me move in and out. This fits the model to the screen. Here I can display the model as materials and outlines, materials only, or outlines only. Here I can hide solids and meshes. I can turn the grid on and off here. I like to keep this tool off. This is grouping while snapping. I don't like to have the parts automatically group together when I snap them together, so I keep that off. This tool lets me toggle snapping on and off. By snapping, I mean what the model snaps to as I move it. And snapping is set here. If I want to snap at 10 millimeter increments or 15 or 30, I just set it appropriately. I can also turn snapping off which is basically what this does right here. And I'll turn them both back on. If I click on Edit Grid, I get this dialog box. I can change the grid's units. Right now it's in millimeters, but if I click Inches and Update, you can see it's now in inches. I can adjust the width and height of the boxes, and I can even set a preset for the exact 3D printer I plan to use. Now it's taken on the proportions of the MakerBot Rep2. Here's the part spin. I can find all sorts of great things to bring into the work plane, such as hardware. That's pretty big, so if I click on it, I can scale it down.
And that's an overview of the interface.